We're continuing to work on the workbench this week. It, like I said last week, it's a pretty unusual feature to our boat, but it's going to be really awesome when it's done and usable. And this week I'm working on all the little stuff to make it come together. Uh, I'm really excited to show you how it turns out. I think it came out really well. My name is Matt. Follow along as I turn Duracell, the legendary ocean racing sailboat, into a comfortable cruising home. Okay, so that's a good fit. And now I'm just going to draw the drawers, start cutting them out, and then I can build them. Now that the legs of the bench were built, it was time to build drawers. I made the fa faces first from the mock-ups and then drew the drawer shapes onto the face. Is that the bottom drawer? That is the bottom of the bottom drawer. Bottom of the bottom drawer. The bottom of the bottom. I'm using a laser level a lot here. It keeps everything level and it's really handy in this case to transfer lines from one side of the box to another and from inside the box to outside and vice versa. Is that the top of the top drawer? That's the top of the top drawer. bottom of the drawer on the inside of the cabinet box. Once I had the drawers drawn, then it was time to cut out the drawer faces from my foam stock. These bottom and top trim pieces that I'm fitting into the box here are going to define the area that the drawers fit in. Yanni tells me that I've made this face a lot this week. Okay, this is one is taking me forever to figure out, but uh, I'm not a cabinet maker, and so, but I, I think I finally figured it out. This one specifically is difficult because. Uh, if you're looking at it from the top, this is the hole. This is this is this leg. This is this bulkhead, and I made these deliberately at a slant, so the front of the drawer is not perpendicular to the drawer, and the drawer is just going to slide out parallel to the leg there. So I got this one. This is a mock-up of the bottom of the top drawer. And so you can see that this, ang this is angled to be flush with the front here. So how I'm doing it is this, is this line is the bottom level of the drawer. And then this line is my spacer. So I'm just gluing all this in with hot glue for right now because to make sure it all fits and everything. So then I have to find where the slider goes on my spacer here. So this is my 
mark for the bottom of the drawer so the spacer goes uh, underneath that line. So then I take my, this is my slider. The door to the bedroom is right here. There's going to be trim around this door, and so it'll stick out a little ways. And so we have to make sure that when we pull the door out, the, the drawer, when we pull the drawer out, it's not gonna hit the trim that's on the door. So I have to space it out just half an inch is what I did from this bulkhead. On this one, it can just slide directly on the leg itself. Okay, so I've got my sliders in. And so the drawer will be the same width. The drawers will be the same width. Uh, the top drawer will be the same width as all the other, or the middle and the bottom drawer. So put it in. And then I just have to find the line. It's just a line parallel to this one that goes from this edge to that one. So now that's the shape from here to here of my drawer. So now I just gotta go cut them out and um, glue them together. I used my drawer mock-ups to cut out the drawer bottoms. It's the last cut of the night. I got all the drawer pieces cut out, including the sides and faces, and ready to be glued together in the morning. These are the guts of the my actually the third drawer that I'm building, and I'm gluing these together initially with this CNA glue, which I think you like is model airplane glue. I grew up building model airplanes, and so I'm very familiar with hanging around in the basement using model airplane glue. And it's really handy because it cures really quickly, so I can just glue these these together have them be solid and then I can epoxy them together later. And then what makes this CNA glue, CNA glue really awesome is you have this spray that you just spray onto the seam, the glue surface, and it just makes it cure instantly. See, it's just a touch tight. For the drawers to fit and slide well, I had to do a lot of trimming. Okay, there's one. That seems to fit really well. Fits pretty well. So these drawers are built without the faces on them and they seem to fit pretty good. So next thing is to uh, put the faces on and make sure that these slides are perfectly level and everything. And then I have to glue the whole thing together. It's all just kind of mocked up with uh, hot glue right now. That's a funny looking drawer. Yep. Ta-da! This is drawer number two, the middle drawer. Gluing the face on.
cute. Look at my cute little drawer. Ta-da. That looks cool. I think so too. A problem that has been on my mind since we started working on the interior of the boat are the edges, the exposed foam edges of all these foam panels that I'm making. And there are a few different ways I've come up with of finishing these edges. I don't want them exposed because they can get damaged really easy, especially in a place like a drawer where it's sliding in and out all the time. And so my mom and I were just talking about, and there are like a few different ways to do this. We could dig out the foam and fill it with thickened epoxy. We could route the edges and then lay a, lay fiberglass over the edges. That's what I did in the, in the, V-berth in the little cubbies. I could edge band it with wood, make a nice wood trim, which is what we're going to do in a lot of places, uh, like in the bathroom around the counters and stuff. Okay. But all those things require either a lot of work or a lot of uh, epoxy to um, finish all these edges that we won't even see. And so my mom had this great idea of we could make our own edge bands out of fiberglass uh, and cut them into strips and epoxy them onto these exposed foam edges. So what we're gonna do is an experiment today and we're going to make long strips of three layers of six ounce cloth, vacuum bag it so it's super flat and consistent and then cut them into strips and glue them onto the edges and see how it looks. So it's an experiment. Hopefully it will save us on some time and effort. What are you doing, Judy? I am fiberglassing the front of the drawer, the drawer face, to the rest of the drawer. Is that not pretty? Maybe we should call the boat inspector to come check out your work, Judy. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> I know what that inspector would say. What? Meow? <laughs> I'm excited to see how your idea for protecting this foam works out. Okay, so this test piece that we made is ready to use. What I'll do is cut them, cut it into strips. So initially it was a four inch wide piece that we laminated three layers of the six ounce uh, cloth tapes. Then I'll cut them into like a little more than half inch wide strips like this. And I'll take the peel ply off and I'll just glue this onto the edges. So I think that's how we're gonna finish most of the edges around the boat, the foam, the exposed foam edges. It goes pretty quickly. It took me, you know, five minutes to do 
uh, the top and bottom of this piece. And so, and I think it will use the least amount of materials, uh, you know, this could be the cheapest way to, for me to do it. I'm anxious to hear what you think. Everything's been fit into this area for the workbench. The drawers have been cut and fit, the sliders and the spacers and everything. Uh, the upper cabinet is ready to be glued in and so that's what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to uh, glue and cove this top, the top of this shelf. Uh, I'll tape it in. I'll glue and tab in the little mini bulkheads that make the, you know, sections in, in the cabinet. I'll just be doing one side of everything. I have all these blocks that hold it all into place. And so, but the blocks are only on one side. And so I'll uh, glue and tab just one side and then I'll come back tomorrow after it's all cured and I'll take all the blocks off and do the under, like the underside and the other side of the, of the little mini bulkheads. Uh, and I'll also glue in the frame of the face that's gonna go on here. It is 9 p.m., hence the yawning. My favorite time to work. So this was your first time ever building cabinets. How did it go? Uh, I think it went pretty well. It was very tedious, and I, I could have done things differently to make it easier on myself from the very beginning. Like what? Well, like I could have built the whole, the cabinets outside of the boat to begin with, like built boxes outside of the boat that would have fit into the boat. Um, I think that's probably how most people do it, or most like boat, boat builders do it. I kind of figured that I would, it would use more material to do it that way, because I'm sharing bulkheads on, on in each box I'm sharing one end of it with a bulkhead and so I can't build just half the box outside of the boat with the drawers and everything I don't know I, I didn't I didn't think it through through all, uh, all the way I guess is the best way to put it so um, but otherwise I made it hard on myself by making this more, more forward drawer you know at an angle but it, it came out all right this one's also a little funny because the the ring frame that it's on is not perpendicular to the waterline. It's uh, ang it's a uh, raked at the same angle that the mast was raked because that's where the chain plates, the vertical chain chain plates were. So anyway, there's there were all kinds of things that made it a little bit more difficult, but uh, I don't know. I'm happy with them. I think they'll be really cool. I think when it comes time to build cabinets for the, or at least drawers for the kitchen, the galley, I think Yanni is excited about having those made professionally. <laughs> Fair, true. I, I just asked you if you would consider having someone else make them. I would. Yeah. Maybe by the time I, maybe by the time we get to that point, I'm like just a drawer wizard, but don't count on it. I gotta make some more epoxy. Is 
lot of little pieces had to be glued and glassed in, including the upper cabinet, but it came together pretty well. So I'm gonna quit working on this for a while. I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. Lots of cabinet space. The drawers are working really well. There's some trimming and gluing and stuff that still needs to be done. Uh, and the next big steps will be painting. Uh, trim goes around this. There's gonna be rounding some corners and stuff. This millimeter surface is not gonna be the permanent one. This is just to use while the boat is being built and I can use this counter space uh, you know, while we're still working on the boat. So. Once it's time to launch, then I'll change this to a nice new surface. But otherwise, I think it turned out really nice. We got a bunch of new Patreons this week. Thank you so much to everybody. This project doesn't happen without you. So uh, first, thank you to Ryan, who's from the UK. He now lives in uh, Australia. His parents actually introduced him to our project and uh, they built their own boat in their driveway many, many years ago and uh, now have recently taken over another project, a Fisher 30, which looks like a really fun project. And uh, Ryan sails, he has a B-14, so like a go-fast skiff that he sails around Sydney Harbor. So thank you very much to Ryan and his parents. Uh, thank you to Edward and Barb. Edward is an engineer and he builds carbon fiber RC glider airplanes, which are awesome. Uh, it sounds like a really fun hobby and they've both recently taken sailing lessons gone through all the navigation and uh, all the courses and uh, looking to get into sailing so thank you very much Edward and Barb uh, thank you to Thor who's from the west coast of Norway uh, he's been sailing for many years 30 toward toward thank you to toward toward <laughs> Uh, from the west coast of Norway, he's been sailing for many years, uh, spent a lot of time sailing in uh, uh, the North Sea. Uh, he, him and his family have a harbor grassy that they are fixing up and plan to do some extended cruising on in the near future. Also, thank you to Jeff, who is from North Carolina. Uh, him and his wife lived in the Marshall Islands for a long time, and they fixed up a uh, it's a McGregor 36, which I never heard of. They found it on, on a mooring ball and took it out of the water and got it all fixed up. It's actually a McGregor 36 is a catamaran, which I'd never heard of before. He said it's just a big Hobie cat. So it sounds like a lot of fun cruising around the Marshall Islands on a catamaran. And then also thank you to Mark, who's from North Dakota. He built uh, this cool little sailing dinghy in his garage. Uh, he's looking forward to this winter being over so he can get back out on the lake and go, go for sale. He had to cut a hole in the side of his garage to cut, to get the boat out. 